Hey everyone, Slightly here. This is going to be a quick, informal Unity installation tutorial for Throwball. If you haven't already, check out the product showcase, and if you want a better understanding of how to use Throwball, watch the in-game usage tutorial. To jump around, check out the links and timestamps below, and if you have any LinkedIn questions, please check out the official documentation or the Discord server. To get started, let's click on the top toolbar option here for Throwball, or use this keyboard shortcut, and it'll add the installer to your avatar. After you validated your license key on Discord, just paste it in here and it'll activate it on your PC for the first time. Now to start with, let's install Throwball with the default settings as quickly as possible. Then later we'll discuss individual settings so that you can customize Throwball to your liking. So for the quick setup, I'm just going to make sure this is following the correct hand or body part I would like it to follow before dropping. Choose the default ball or pick my own ball of whichever ball I want to install and then hit begin setup. At that point, we're just going to position it on our avatar after it generates this hierarchy for us. And you're going to see the pedestal here I can edit the position of using this button and these arrows. I can use this ball target editing to adjust the position of the ball to see it. I can just enable the ball itself when it's customizing its size. And after that, we're just going to make sure this collider aligns with the ball perfectly. For any of the default balls, it should be pretty close. If you need to adjust the scale of the ball, feel free to enable the scale handle. And otherwise, just complete setup. And that's it. Throw ball is installed and you are good to upload. Nice and easy. If you need to uninstall throw ball, we're going to add the installer again and you can remove it from your avatar or even clean out all the files out of the project entirely for a totally fresh start. If you want to install more systems, you can add additional systems by performing the exact same steps you did the first time and it'll just install it on the side as a totally separate system, but it'll just use more memory each time you keep installing it, so keep that in mind. Now let's go through each of these settings in a little bit more detail so that you can customize the robot to your liking. Starting from the top, target to follow allows you to pick which part of your body you would like throw a ball to follow before it gets dropped in space or before it's grabbed. So right hand, left hand, there's an option for custom if you want to choose a custom game object out of your hierarchy. But otherwise, I'm just going to leave it on my hand for now, or maybe on my hips this time so we can show you how that looks. Force mode is a little bit more complicated. It's the backbone of the system, how the force of the throw is calculated. There's two totally different mechanics that you can pick from here. They each have their own pros and cons. So I would recommend looking at the in-game user tutorial or the official documentation for a side-by-side -side comparison. If you don't really know which one to pick, I would pick force particle because it's a little bit more stable and easier for newer users. Now, here you can add up to eight balls in the exact same system to switch between that'll share like the same physics system. For now, I'm just going to leave it at three or four. And these drop downs allow you to pick from any of the default balls that are included in throw ball, or you can supply your own custom game object here as well. For each one, you can set a custom physics setting or value as well. If you switch it to custom, you'll be able to switch the drag and bounce values individually. For now, I'm going to just install the default three balls for us. Under advanced options, you can pick from all these settings here. The first one being right defaults, where if it says auto, don't really worry about it. It'll automatically make itself compatible with whatever your avatar currently has. If it doesn't say auto, that means you either have mixed right defaults or you just don't have any animations whatsoever. So you'll just have to pick whichever one you want it to be installed with. Include menu respawn button allows you to have a button in your menu that you can use to respawn the ball in case you want to use the wheel every single time. While over here on the right, it include gesture to respawn allows you to pick a gesture to do that'll respawn the ball. This is useful if you have more than one system installed and you want to respawn all of them at once. You can choose between left, right hand, either hand, or both hands like a combo gesture if you want to do a specific gesture to respawn balls. Physical respawn pedestal is the same pedestal you saw earlier. It has a little button on it you can press physically with your finger to respawn the ball, which is also convenient if you have other friends who want to respawn the ball by pressing the pedestal. Now, 
This is totally optional. You don't have to have the pedestal depending on your own like circumstances. And if you remove that setting, you'll actually have a new setting down here where you can choose whether or not activating the system will drop the ball in world space or not. So for example, if I were to have a ball tied to my hips, I could choose not to use the pedestal and have it not world drop so that I can maybe have like a grenade on my belt that will keep following my hips even after I activate the system until I grab it and throw it. On the right, we have include collision parameter, which is where a throwable will add logic to drive a bull on and off whenever a ball comes in contact with like a world surface. So this is good for, again, systems like maybe like a grenade or whatever custom implementations you make it maybe think of using that. Include throw force radial control allows you to have a radio puppet that can crank up or turn down how hard you throw the ball. So this is pretty useful for getting used to the throws and how you want it to feel. And then allow remote grabbing allows other people to grab the ball and sometimes throw it, although the throwing due to VR chat limitations can feel a little bit scuffed. So include remote tracker adds some stop gaps to make it feel a little bit better for remote throwers. However, it's still not perfect. So if in the end you don't even care about how it feels when other people try to throw it, you can uncheck this to save on some components and performance in your hierarchy, or you can maybe just disable remote grabbing entirely, right? But if you enable allow remote grabbing, people can at least pick it up pretty decently every single time. Throwing is a different story, which is where include remote check comes in. So maybe they can fetch the ball for you, but they won't just throw it back. <laughs> Depends on how you use the system. Now, there is an additional setting that shows up here if you switch over to Fizz Joint, where you can actually toggle syncing of the ball entirely. Force Particle has syncing as mandatory, so that's why it's not an option, but for Fizz Joint, you can choose to have the ball system not sync whatsoever, which means when you throw the ball, it's going to look totally different for anybody else. Which is fine if you don't care about other people seeing it and you just want to play with the ball system yourself and chuck it out a wall. It'll also save you a ton more memory if you notice enabling this cranks it up a decent amount. If you have syncing enabled, Fizz Joint also comes with the option to turn off the syncing in game at any given time. And this is especially useful for if you want other people to throw the ball smoothly and seamlessly without it feeling delayed due to the network, or like the IK. By turning the sync off, it'll feel perfect for them, but you won't see it in the same spot they do. But whenever they're done playing with it, you can turn your sync back on, and then they'll see it perfectly whenever you throw it. So that's the, the nice benefit there. That covers all of the options under advanced options here. So lastly, we have save file path, which you can use to choose where you want the files to be generated in your project, as well as these debug options, which I'm not going to get too much into, but these are mostly for determining the thresholds of your radial puppet, as well as the way the syncing and throw feels, whether for fizz joint or for force particle. Tweaking these can take a decent amount of time to play with, so I would look over the documentation and really you should know what you're getting yourself into when you touch those, but otherwise I would just leave them as is. Now at this point, just to show you the next screen, I'm going to hit add additional system. And you're going to see what the install looks like with multiple balls. Without the pedestal, you'll see the edit ball target just starts from here off the bat. If I enable all the balls, you'll see them there. And this time it's bound to my hips, right? So leaving it right here means when I walk around, it's like as if it were on my belt. Now, when you have multiple balls installed at the same time, you're gonna see this option for edits individual target offsets per ball. And this allows you to, instead of moving the offsets all together, right, you can do one at a time. So maybe this is ball one, I want it to be a little closer. Maybe this is ball two, and since it's smaller, I want it to be really, really close. And then for ball three, since it's the largest, I can leave that out of it. And that way, all the balls will still move together and follow the same point, 
but you adjust the positioning a little bit more specifically to your liking. If I want to disable the individual target offsets for ball, I can just uncheck this and they'll all snap back together the same way. It depends on whichever you prefer. Otherwise, the rest of the installation process is exactly the same as before. You can just hit complete setup and finish everything. Now that pretty much covers the entire installation process for Throwball. Again, if you have any further questions, please reach out on Discord, check the official documentation, and I look forward to seeing what kinds of objects you're going to be slinging around at your fronts. <laughs> Peace.